Okay, so now that we have the room here. Okay, so this will be the menu of the areas and the um, functions and features to be configured. So first things first, as I mentioned, there are eight channels. Okay, so they can be enabled and uh, configured here. So if we look at channel one, so the input type, it's disabled. So we can select will it be RTD, thermocouple, voltage or current. For this test, we will look at currents. So let me make them currents. current okay in fact let me just unpin these windows on the side here for to enable us to have more space here okay now input ranges this can be changed okay so we said current let's go from um, 0 to 20 milliamps as you can see the famous 4 to 20 milliamps also there um, but for simplicity's sake, we will use 0 to 20. Although, for obvious reasons, the 4 to 20 would be the superior option for practical applications in the field due to the features and functions it brings to the fit. Right, okay. <clears throat> so these will be the um, basic settings to enable the... Um, inputs for the analogs right you can play around with the other features as, if you want to as well like for instance the unit etc if you use temperature Kelvin Fahrenheit centigrade whatever you need for RTs and thermal couples but okay for this exercise we only look at milliamps right if we look at the application settings here um, you can, without writing a PLC program or using a HMI or the SCADA to do the scaling, you can do the scaling of each of the channels within the PLC. So you can enable it here and then add the upper and lower limit in your engineering value range. In other words, 0 to 2000 kPa or 0 to 10 bar, um, 120 to... 3000 degrees Celsius, minus 50 to 120 degrees Celsius, etc. You can change these values here. Levels 0 to um, 0 to 100 can work. So, yeah, that would be the scaling for each channel. However, we won't be looking at the scaling in this uh, example, so I'm just going to disable that part right then alarms so remember the buffer memory and address registers which we showed early on here yeah? so if you click here all these uh, um, addresses here yeah so this will be associated to all of these upper limits and lower limits um, alarms and warnings and so on as well as the logging functionality that is uh, what that would be for as for the refresh settings not a lot of um, important changes but a lot of functionality and features that can be used if needed um, one that might be interested interesting for the user would be this digital output value yeah okay as well as the digital operation value so in these variables you can specify for instance digital output value where the analog values must be stored for each channel which address registers on the plc okay so let's just add them here for the sake of uh, completion So 
So obviously each one will take a word. So you don't have to space them that this far um, apart like I did here. Anyway, when this is done, uh, and you're done with all your settings here, first things first, it must be pointed out that everything which you've changed will have a green tick here so that you know what what um, changes have been made from the default setting uh, which is very helpful for troubleshooting right so when all this is done you can do a check no errors found here in many cases there will be a apply button here if there's a apply button this apply button must be pressed before the settings would be stored and applied to your plc if not um, none of the settings which was um, configured here would be um, applied to the plc right now next step would be to convert the plc program just to make sure that all the settings is right and there's no errors to see the errors um, you can go to the site yeah, I just want to, I'm just looking for that menu which will show you the errors that's applicable if, if any it will show you an error um, just have a look for that. see if I can find it okay so there are many of these um, menus being docked here so we have to close some to actually access the output window so let's just do that ah USB here we see zero errors zero warnings for the compile just gonna see if I can find the output one there's the watch window we'll need it later on here we go uh, zero errors. Alright, let me just make it slightly bigger here. Yeah, zero errors. Just build it again. Zero errors. Okay. Then obviously the last step would be to save your project. I'm gonna call it the FX5 UJ analog. Um, Eight a the analog setup right and then obviously the last step would be to program this these settings onto the plc so let's do that online write to plc note you can only write to plc if the um, program has been successfully converted and build which is um, known as the compile okay so to write a program to the plc as you know parameters and programs unless specifically required to write additional pointers to the plc program will be the logic parameters should be this configurator settings here which we just completed right after this has been done you have to physically reset your plc this can be done either by a power cycle wait 10 seconds and then turn the plc on or with the little switch on the plc the reset functionality so i'm going to use that better option here an error will pop up showing that the communication is missing this will happen during a reset you will see an error pop up Okay, let's see put back into run mode. And yeah, set, um, the setup is done, no errors, either on the PLC or on the program.